Welcome back to the Super Data Science series on Scrapey, where we're using the Scrapey library to create web spiders. In this episode, number seven, we are continuing our third spider, where we left off as a quick recap in the last video. We are going to scrape and return some items from the IMDb or the movie website in the uh, top charts. If we take a quick look, this is the page, the top rated movies, top 250, as rated by IMDb users. This is what we're gonna be looking to return. We are working with links here. We'll, you know, we'll get into that more in a second. And if we jump back to look at our spider, we have our import statements. We created our items in the last lecture. So if you're unfamiliar with that, please visit the last lecture. We created our items and we are importing movie item and we set up the name of our spider, the allowed domains and start URLs. So as a quick recap, we set up our class import statements and we're ready to go. What we're going to be doing next is creating the main part of our spider, which is the parse. It's going to go out and look for the objects to return to us. So let's get right to it. All right. So we're getting started with parse. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to define parse. We're going to set ourselves in response to return items to us. And we're going to try and get a deeper understanding of really what's going on here with scraping. So first things first, let's define it. And we need to Pass in ourself and our response to return objects to us. And as always, if you're unsure, you can always pull up the documentation from Scrapey. So we're looking at response. I mean, excuse me, we're looking at parse right now. And you can pull up the main documentation to see some additional context with the parse method. But moving back to our spider, since we are working with the IMDb and we're working with links, we're going to be working with the XPath. What we want to do here is, and it'll make more sense once we pass it in, once we actually see this part of the code, is we're going to define this to return off of the response to XPath, the title column, and we're going to extract that. So let's get that written out right now. We want to use the following. We're going to links equals response dot XPath. And this is where you can actually use your inspector to, if you want to go onto that page and play around and take a look on some of the elements, we're going to use the body at class equals quotation marks. Close parentheses. Backslash. TR, TD, again, at class equals, here we're looking for the title column. Again, look in the inspector and you can find the title column. Close parentheses, close brackets, backslash A, backslash with a link, href with a final closing parentheses, and then we need to run extract. Okay, so let's take a look at this right now. All right, just wanna check that message. You know, we haven't set it for use yet. Here, we're setting the keyword links to equal the response path of the X path. And what we can do is if you go in the inspector, you can find the class, the title column, and you can explore through this further. And for those of you or any of you that might be confused, if you look at this, you know, you could be thinking, what is TR? What is TD? You know, I have no idea what these things mean. Let's take a quick look. They're related to the HTML elements or the selector. We discussed the inspector before. And if you go into the inspector, you can find these elements. But if you're unsure, let's take a look. What is TR? You can see I already have it listed here for you. You know, the TR element defines a row of cells in a table. You do the same thing for TD. And by looking at this, you can see our classes of you know, the elements. It's a, it's a very good selector to use in general for both HTML, CSS, um, and Scrapey because we do define these classes. I mean, even in programming languages in general, it's more specific. You can see the class list or list and the class title column. It's just those selectors that are going to help return to us the specified links, the specified information that we're trying to scrape off of the IMDb page. And since we're working with links and also a list here, remember the top 250 movies, 
we are going to need to set a for loop to run through the links to extract the data. We'll also have to set the i to increment, and we need to define our for loop for link in links. And here, we're gonna be setting a few different terms, and as we are coding here, we'll try to make some sense of it, but that in the end, when we're done with this block of code, when we're done with this for loop, we'll try and analyze it further to get a better understanding. So let's get started to define some parameters. We need to set our response URL join, again, with link. We're gonna go to the next URL. And here, bear with me again, because this is gonna get a little long and we're gonna be passing in some more selectors on the in the HTML and the CSS to return and for the purpose of the for loop. Let's get that in right now. We need to open with parentheses. We're using this for a selector and we're using an actual ID here. Would it be at symbol ID equals main. Sometimes it helps, you know, using the double parentheses and single parentheses for organization purposes as well. And closing brackets. We want to use the following selectors, div span slash div slash div again and slash div one more time with the selector of two to continue table slash t body slash tr. Now we need an opening bracket. We need to add our string of i, again, plus sign, working in our for loop, slash td of three. Oh, one second, td of opening brackets, three, slash strong, slash text. parentheses, and the closing parentheses. All right, <clears throat> just wanted to check this real quick. Yep, we still haven't used it yet. Yes, it is a little long, but if you go, and I think what's gonna really help you visualize it and really understand it further is to open up the inspector and to try and find and really experiment with selectors on the page in general. You know, try to look for IDs, try to look for classes. You're gonna find uh, divs. You're gonna find tables within the page and a strong text. Again, strong is going to be bold in HTML and CSS, you know, strong reference or strong. This is how you create your text into bold. But really go in, inspect the page, take a look and see if you can find elements, you find similar elements and even try and draft some ideas on, you know, maybe I wanna return this element instead of that, or I think this would be a better way to return a list or to scrape other specific data. And so we continue, let's return this. And we need to pass in a new parameter name to response of the XPath. Again, it should be a little familiar with these responses of the XPath, so our selectors. We want the URL next, since we are working through that list, you know, we're working through 250 URL next dot extract. All right, we have that set. And we're gonna work on closing and finishing up this loop we are setting our if statement now to utilize the i for incrementation. If it's less than or equal to length of links, we will have double parentheses. We want to set the incrementation i equals i plus one. And the final for this we're going to use yield scrapey request pass in our apps URL our callback equals self dot parse in detail and our meta as the following we're going to use rating for it equals rating closing quotation, colon, rating. All right, now, since we just wrote that out, let's check this over real quick, and let's do a power recap. And look at me here, making spelling mistakes. 
make sure you actually use the word parse, but we can look through the following and we have our define of our parse. We're again, working through the entire list of the 250. We're also working with our response X path for our links. We have set a for loop to actually run through the selectors and to run through it. And it's going to return or it's going to run through them and return once we pass in our items as well. And finally, we're using yield in Scrapey to return our request. Essentially, that's what yield is referring to. For example, if we look at some other demo spiders in Scrapey, we can see you know yield of the title with the selector of H3 or yield uh, my item title equals H3. It's a main operation in Scrapey when you're finishing or closing out that parse to yield the information. But at this point, I think it's a great idea to pause here for the moment because once we get into the next section, this should make some more sense, especially when we're using our item with the response that we're looking for. We're going to actually return some data as well. We're going to run our scrape or scrapey, our spider. And how many terms? We are using quite a few terms for that. But overall, great job so far. If you have any questions or comments and ideas, please share them. As always, please subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. Just a fantastic and phenomenal way to stay up to date in the industry with new and exciting information all the time. And on that note, I'm going to grab some coffee and I will see you in the next part of the series.